Hello. I am not a religious man, but I do believe in confession. And my confession to you today is this. I like lame bugs. And I cannot lie. No, but why do I like lame bugs? It's because most of the time when you find a, a bug that seems that it has some kind of security impact, but you can't demonstrate it or you, you don't have any way to exploit it, most people will just dismiss it and say, oh, you can't use that, uh, it requires too much user interaction or whatever it may be. But for me, I like to see these, um, these lame bugs as challenges. And one of these types of bugs is what I'm going to talk to you about today. Um, as illustrated, uh, the topic of this talk is self-XSS. Now, I just want to say something before I, I get into the details, is that I'm not going to talk about any new research at all, but for the most point, this is still stuff that a lot of people, if not most, don't know about. In fact, when I did my research on this talk, I thought that some of it was new, but turns out uh, this technique has been known even since 2007 and something like that. But in any case, self-XSS, what is it? Um, it can mean many things, and it's been used to describe many different kinds of bugs uh, throughout the years. So what I say, or what I mean when I say self-XSS is cross-site scripting vulnerabilities affecting only the currently authenticated user. In other words, an XSS that is only on your account. What I don't mean when I say self-XSS is the social engineering attack where you trick someone to open the JavaScript console and paste the JavaScript payload there. Some people use the term self-XSS to describe that, but that's not what we're going to talk about today. Self-XSS, um, like other types of XSS, has multiple um, categories. Um, and today I'm going to talk about reflected self-XSS and stored self-XSS. What they are, um, why it's a controversial topic in the bug bounty world, and uh, how you can exploit it. So let's talk about reflected self-XSS. I would like you to, I would like to invite you to uh, a trip down into my memories of my first encounter with self-XSS. And it was back in 2011. And uh, back then, not that many people had web bug bounty programs, but one of the companies that did have it and was kind of the pioneer of the whole bug bounty in web phenomenon uh, was Google. And uh, I found a blog post um, that talked about an, a self-XSS on Google titled Exploitation of Self-Only Cross-Site Scripting in Google Code. And this honestly blew my mind back then because what they did was that they found out that there was this text box in Google Code and if you entered manually a cross-site scripting payload into the text field, it would fire. And so at first sight, you might think, oh, well, that's basically unexploitable. I mean, you, to exploit this against someone, you have to trick them to go to this page, and then they have to type in the payload themselves, and then they are attacked. Um, and so back then, at least, what I would probably do is just, eh, I can't do anything with this. I'll just leave it. But they showed a very nifty technique on how you can actually make this exploitable. Um, and, uh, <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> so I told you that uh, these, are, these are not new, this is not new research. Uh, so I was a little bit nervous before I went up here and I thought to myself, well, what if they will think that I'm a super lamer? Um, what, can I, what can I do to, to impress them? And I thought that uh, people like bravery, right? Uh, and what can be more brave than uh, to have uh, two uh, live demos in a 15-minute presentation? <laughs> and lo and behold, <laughs> this is, oh, you can't see that. <laughs> uh, yeah, good enough. This is the mock-up of the Google Code vulnerability that I talked about and the guy uh, wrote the blog post about. And you can see that, yes, to demonstrate. 
yeah, if we, if we enter a JavaScript payload into this text box, it will run. Can I do this? Uh -huh. And this is how they exploited it. They started by making an iframe to this Google code page from another domain. So on this page, what we see here is the outside of this iframe is on the MatthiasCarlson.me origin. And this iframe is on avlidinbrun.se. And so we know that if we type in the cross scripting payload here, it will fire. And check this out. If we drag this text like this, what will happen is that the browser will uh, drag the text this. But if we drag this text, huh, it actually drags alert one. And why is this? This is because the guys who wrote this blog post found out that when you drag something in an HTML document, an event is fired. This event is called on drag start. And the funny thing with on drag start is that you can actually change what is being dragged. So the user will think that they drag a specific text, but they're actually dragging something else. So we can quickly just check the source code of this example. No. Yeah. <laughs> and we can see that we're registering an on drag start event and changing what is being dragged to a text alert one. And so some of you might be naysayers and like, well, that's still super hard to exploit. You need to make someone go to your page and then they have to drag something. But it's still a lot easier to make someone drag something on your page than it is to make them go to Google code and print it in by hand. So that's one way of exploiting self-XSS, reflected self-XSS. Let's go back to the history. What I usually do when I discover a new technique, um, especially in web, is that I try to do some more research on it, like did they miss something, can I, can I develop this somehow? And then I try to apply it on other bug bunny programs. And of course, I did this back then too, in 2011. And uh, around a month later, I did actually find the, basically the sec exact same bug, but on Google Maps instead of Google Code. And I was like, score, I'm gonna send this into Google, get that bounty money, and uh, yeah. Given it's self XSS only, the panel determined that this bug didn't meet the threshold for a reward. And I got nothing. And such is the life of a bug bounty hunter. This started a little bit of a debate or discussion about self XSS in the bug bounty community, and uh, sadly, Google and these older pioneers of bug bounty programs set the precedent that self-XSS was not something that we should award for. It not, should not be considered a security vulnerability. And uh, nowadays, when people create their bug bounty program descriptions, what they usually do is that they don't write all of it by themselves. They take the text from another company and, and change it, or they take it from a, like a boilerplate text, right? And so most bug bounty programs look like this now, if you look at the description. So not eligible for bounty, self-XSS, or self-XSS reports will not be accepted. And uh, I would like to challenge that view, uh, because as you could clearly see, this is very much exploitable, given the right preconditions. That was reflected. Let's talk about the stored self-XSS. And so naturally, stored self-XSS would be a stored XSS that only executes in, uh, in the context of the currently authenticated user. There are multiple ways that you can exploit this. Uh, these are the two that I have had most uh, success with. Um, and they both require another vulnerability in the chain. So one, if the application containing the self-XSS has CSRF on login, log out, meaning that you can force another user to log out and then force them to authenticate, you can exploit it. Or if you have a cookie injection on the origin, so you can somehow inject a cookie into that domain. The first scenario, 
with login and logout, it works in four simple steps. This is all you have to do to exploit it. First, you open an iframe to some sensitive content on the domain. So let's say there's an endpoint slash get credit card or something. You open an iframe there, then you use CSRF to log them out, and then you use CSRF to log them into your account where the stored XSS is, and then you open another iframe with the stored self-XSS frame. And the point of this is that you will have two iframes. One of them was loaded when the victim was logged in as themselves. One of them was loaded when they were logged in as the attacker. And given that they are on the same origin, the attacker iframe is able to load the data that was loaded in the victim iframe. If you're more of a visual person, I tried to draw this. I'm not very good at design, but here we go. So here's the first iframe, uh, loaded when the victim is authenticated as the victim user. Then we log them out. We log them into the attacker's account. We open another iframe with a stored self XSS page. And given that those two iframes are on the same origin, we're allowed to extract the data. Yeah. That's pretty cool. And if you think that I'm already brave, guess what? I have another demo. This thing keeps falling off. OK. Here we go. I have built this application that I talked about with the credit card page. We can go in and log in as the admin user. No, man. And uh, yeah, there's a view credit card page. We can see that the credit card for you, the admin user is this, right? And now we head on over to the proof of concept page. And it's important to note that this is on avlidinbrun.se origin, and the attacking page is on matthiascarlson.me. So we can go here, and this iframe simply points to, the, to here. And when we click here, it will do the whole log, log out, log into our account, self XSS, and extract, hopefully. And we have extracted the uh, credit card of the admin user. So, reflected self XSS, stored self XSS. Given the right preconditions, obviously exploitable. Uh, oh yeah, I had one other example of how you can exploit stored self-XSS. And this can be useful where there, you can't force them to log out or force them to authenticate as your user. But you have, uh, let's say you have a subdomain takeover, like Franz talked about, or you have an XSS on another subdomain or you have a response header injection. What do these three have in common? They are all bugs that you can use to set cookies on the user. And this is only two steps, actually. The first thing you want to do is you set the attacker's session cookie on the page with self-XSS. And you can do this by setting the domain and the path attribute of the cookie. And then you send the victim to that page. And what will happen when you do this is that the victim will be logged in as the victim user in the whole application, except for the page where the stored self XSS is present, which means that we can just send them there, and then we can extract the info in the same manner as we did with iframes. Visually, the first thing we do is we set a cookie on the user with the attacker's um, session cookie on, with the path of the path to the page with the self XSS. Then we load that page in an iframe. So in this specific iframe, the victim will be authenticated as the attacker on that specific page. 
And then we open another iframe, or we can do this with Ajax or whatever we like. We open the credit card page, for example, or some page with sensitive data, and the same concept can be applied. Same origin, so that the, the XSS in the first frame is allowed to read the secret data in the other frame. So yeah, that is three ways that you can uh, exploit uh, the lame bug self-XSS. And um, the next time you find a self-XSS or the next time someone reports a self-XSS to you, uh, please consider the um, possibility to exploit it by using these methods before dismissing it as a non-security issue. Last but not least, my name is Matthias Carlson. You can find me on um, any given social media uh, as Avli Dinbrun. And that's all I wanted to share with you today. Thank you. Thank you, Matthias. You might want to keep that mic on if we have any questions. Do we have any questions from the crowd? Uh, no. Oh, yeah, we've got one over here. All right. Uh, how far along do you think we are with getting companies to reassess the uh, view that it's just not an issue? Um, not far at all, I'd say. Um, like, I can, I can take examples from uh, my bug monitor reports, and most of the time, even though I send a completely weaponized proof of concept, and it's basically click here, oh, you're owned, uh, I still have a lot of, uh, yeah, how do you say yeah. hardship before they will accept it as a security issue because this whole, oh, self excess that means no, no bug, goodbye, um, is sadly the status quo. All right, any other questions? Not that I can see. All right, thank you again, Matthias. Thank you.